Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It is Local Chat, episode 159. I'm your host, Will Crosby, and joining me this week, for the first time since last time, it's Jake Terrio. Pleasure to be here, William. The pleasure is all Ian Gibson's. Thoroughly pleasured, gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you. It's just a pleasure circle going on here. A pleasure party, as they call them. PPs. Ian, is PPs that why up. your room doesn't smell good? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been farting a lot. I don't even know why. I didn't. I didn't eat anything to deserve this, but it's happening. Um, I just had a can of beans. You know, I can't blame anybody else. I'm the only one that uses this room, so it's just me and my stench over here. Stench Hi. city. SS. That's all over there. Uh, oh, no, no. <laughs> That's wrong and wrong. No, no, no. Ian's Moving little on, please. SS room. Uh, folks, we're here to talk about video games and all sorts of fun things. Uh, almost a bunker, you could call it. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're, uh, we ain't got no chit-chat this week, which is why I popped in with the impromptu Nazi stuff. Uh, I thought that was quite funny. So moving on from that, Thank you. we'll head over to the video game portion of the show. And folks, I'm going to go first because my list is the biggest. And you know what big boys do? They talk about the, their sizes. And that's what we're here to do today. Gentlemen. Nice. I have been playing Ninja Gaiden. I don't know if you've heard of this game. Okay, question. Answer. Which one? Daily Double. Because I barely, I barely know anything about <laughs> this series. <laughs> but, <laughs> but there's like five of them, aren't there? Across multiple there's like... generations of consoles. I think there's six. So, listen here, sir. There is the original trilogy for the SNES, NES and SNES. I can't remember if they're all on NES or some of them are on SNES. Super Nintendo um, and Nintendo, for those who don't understand Thank acronyms. Um, Thank you. What? You're welcome. Um, I am playing the second trilogy, which came out on the Xbox. Phil Spencer's Xbox in 2001. So the first one came out in 2004. Okay. Uh, and that is oh. the one I am playing. So it's two trilogies. Two trilogies. Correct. Okay. Um, gotcha. So I'm, I'm learning. Playing, I'm learning. You're learning. You're learning. That's, that's, all we, that's all we do on this podcast. We learn about Thank perspectives. You, and we knock down bad perspectives that we don't like. Um, so I am playing the first one, Ninja Gaiden. I am playing Ninja Gaiden Sigma. But not only that, I am playing Ninja Gaiden Sigma as part of the Master Collection. Um, so Ninja Gaiden came out on the Xbox, and then okay. Ninja Gaiden Black came out, which was like a remaster or like re-fixing up of Ninja Gaiden. Uh -huh. I don't actually know, so don't yell at me in the comments, what, the ones we don't get. Uh, and then Do there's I. Ninja Gaiden Sigma, which is a remaster for the PlayStation 3 and Xbox... Actually, I think it's just PlayStation 3. And then they took Ninja Gaiden Sigma uh, and uh -huh. they put it on the Xbox One in like 2013. So uh, part of the Master Collection, which was one, two, and three of the newer trilogy. So uh, that is the game I'm playing. It is Ninja Gaiden Sigma. It is the first Ninja Gaiden game, but it's the the whatever version of it. Um, and let Sorry. So, <laughs> I don't ask this question, but I feel like I do need to. When you say first Ninja Gaiden game, is that first of the first trilogy or first of the second trilogy? So I'm playing the first of the second trilogy. I'm only playing the Xbox trilogy. Games. Okay. The I just got confused because when, when you said, yeah, no, yeah, when no, you said no, this, like remaster. Yeah. yeah. When I'm you not, said remaster, I'm, I wasn't sure if you meant like remaster of the NES or remaster of the first no, of the second I, trilogy. I don't know if they have anything to do with each other other than the name or if they're remastered or anything, but everything I just described is the first game of the modern trilogy okay. of those. So okay, there was Ninja gotcha. Gaiden, then there was Black, then there was Sigma, then there was the Master Collection. Um, so I've been playing Ninja Gaiden, and boys, this game is fucking hard. Um, yeah. I, I, am, I am the What's closest the I've... Uh, Team Ninja. I don't know if you've Ninja. ever heard of them. Uh, this, is, this, this is about the closest. I... I have, uh, for the first time in my life, looked at m a move list and thought to myself, I should learn some of these. 
um, like X X Y and the Y Y Y, and you will be sucked. Uh, it is yeah, it is complicated and crazy. Um, I have not played a game. This is such a throwback. I mean, because it is to like that era of video games where it's just like do a bunch of stuff, boss, save points. Uh, you die reloading the whole save point when you exit and enter an area back that all the enemies have respawned and you can like fight them yeah. again. Um, so I am about six hours into the game and it is so much fun and also the hardest thing I've ever done in my life and the most frustrating thing. Currently, I am fighting arguably the hardest boss in the game named Alma and Almond Alma. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and currently, listen, okay, this is my current route. Uh, it's not my current one, but it's, it's before I got extremely angry at myself. My current route to Alma, if I die, I reload at the save point. The save point is uh, at the end of a long flooded hallway that I need to slowly swim through. I swim through okay. the entire flooded hallway into a giant flooded room. Now, as an aside... I entered this flooded room when like the tunnels got flooded behind me and I landed in the flooded room. There's a, the whole floor is flooded. There's an elevator in this room that is underwater. What is your first instinct? You're playing a video game. What do you got to do in this room? Okay. I would quit. I would quit. Cause if I have to do that just to get back to a boss fight, that's no, hard no. from a save. Sorry. I'm done. Drop the game. Sorry. Gone. Sorry. Outside of Done's that, up. you're just in a, you enter a room in a video game and it's flooded with water and you need to get into the elevator. Yeah. You pull What's the, the first thing down. you do? I hold down the Xbox button and then I hit turn off console. Okay. Okay. You're playing Factorio and you get to yeah. a giant lake and it's full of water. Uh -huh. What's the first thing you do? Yeah. Uh, if I'm early tech, I build around it. If I'm late tech, I go get a bunch of concrete and dirt to, to build landfills and then I'd fill it in as needed. Okay. Jake, what's your answer? I said drain it. Drain the swamp. Yeah, okay. That's a great idea. It's not swim into the 45. elevator and use the elevator that's working even though it's underwater. Um, so that's what I have to do. I have to swim from the save point down the entire flooded hallway into the elevator, open the elevator, swim into the elevator, take the elevator up, wait for the elevator to open and close animation, exit the room, walk uh, into the atrium, walk around the atrium, enter the archival room, fight three oh to six God. enemies to get my health back why up to are full. You still, why are you still playing this game? Back up to full. Done so. Then... Leave the room, jump down, fight Alma, and die in about 15 seconds. Um, I've done that maybe 30 times. I finally got to the point where I eliminated the enemy killing part, where I went and filled my health, had enough money to buy another health potion, and then swam all the way back to save. So now when I die, I only have to swim and jump into the fight with Alma. I have gotten gotcha. her health so small, and it is a literal nightmare but the worst part about it is i am unfortunately enjoying this and i just i'm gonna beat this game um it just well, can it just, i can i tell you something yeah you should stop playing this game and put all this effort into metal gear rising because if i'm not mistaken i believe you have not played that game is that correct yeah but that game looks boring and dumb and i would rather are play you this game no which is the fun. thing is metal gear that rising say about legends. games it's it's everything you've described is what metal gear rising revengeance is and but it's slightly newer it's better and it's metal gear and you get to fight I, a united states senator yes nano machine son i yeah i'm listen. not saying you have to actually stop playing ninja guy didn't this is really just a transition into you should absolutely play metal gear rising because oh, if you're yeah. enjoying this you got to play Rising Revengeance. Someday I'll play it, but I am genuinely enjoying playing Ninja Gaiden. And like, it's that kind of frustration where you're just like, like, oh, I just got to get through it. And and it's funny, like, there's these ninjas uh, that I fought at the beginning that throw exploding shurikens, and now I can like wipe them out in about like 15 seconds, where like I would constantly die to them beforehand. So yeah. like, it does feel good. I have the double swords now, um, and and it's just neat there's not all this like annoying like dark souls weapon scaling what weapons work like it's kind of just whatever weapons you feel comfortable with that you're using that's nice. and, and that's the part i find enjoyable and then like as far as beating the bosses it's just like getting it down 
uh, to like a science. Like I know what I have to do. I know how to dodge these things and I'm getting hit by them. And I feel like every time I fight that boss fight, I come out of it being like, okay, this is what I need to change. The only part that annoys me out of that boss fight is like 50% of the time you can get a first hit on the boss as the boss fight starts. And the other 50% mm -hmm. you can't hit it. So like, it's funny too, the closest I've been to beating her have been times where I didn't get that initial hit. Uh, which is frustrating because if I had been able to, to nail it, uh, it would have happened. But all my complaints with the game are because it's from 2004. Uh, that's basically it. Other than that, it runs great. It feels great. Uh, and it, and it's kind of fun. The story's weird. I didn't know it was like steampunk. Uh, if you had put a gun to my head, I would not have known that. Um, also in Sigma, they added these levels where you play as Rachel, uh, who is a whose sister is Alma. Uh, and Rachel has the largest bazongas I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, and it is 2004, dead or alive, constant jiggle on her boobs. Jiggle <laughs> physics. Which, yeah. yeah. It's just Bring like, it back. You're just like. Make games great again. She's just you know? standing there talking and they're just going. <laughs> you're just like. Just slowly yeah. jiggling. Oh, uh, it's. Oh, boy. It's, it's a wild game. I'm having fun with it. And it is just as difficult as people say. Um so it's fun cool. uh, I'm, great job it's going well um so that's uh ninja gaiden uh i say ninja gaiden is it ninja gaiden is it like pronounced like that i don't i don't why are you asking the white guys what, what's going on here you're not um steam next fest uh is uh, a thing that is going on right now on steam where they have a bunch of demos for video games and i played a bunch of different demos i have played pacific drive which is a video game, uh, I believe Sony, is Sony invested in it or is, it's just been on their state of play as a bunch. I'm interested uh, in this one. Um, yeah. Fuck if I know. Comes out in two weeks from today though. So it is an upcoming game. Yes, upcoming game. Uh, there's this place somewhere that is uh, the exclusion zone that has this giant border wall uh, that some event happened behind it and the government never said what happened. Uh, you somehow, uh, the demo does this, but you end up on the other side inside of it uh, and you wake up and this car has chosen you uh, to be with it. It's Stalker 2 <laughs> Tokyo Drift. Uh, yeah, it's Stalker 2 Tokyo Drift. Uh, you meet some people over the radio and long story short, you get to this garage where now you park the car in the garage and you can upgrade all the different panels and pieces around it. Uh, you like have a crafting in the back. Um, you can like fix all the tires. You can break down other cars. You can siphon gas out. All this sort of stuff and you were you were not you were driving out picking locations in the place and then it's like loading you into a small section of map and then you are driving around that small section of map collecting things doing missions and then when you want to exit that you get these weird glowing orbs uh, and then you drive into a giant fire laser beam of death that shoots you back there the in-game storytelling of that being that once you're at a place uh, it, it's, it's everything's constantly changing so you're actually always driving over the same places but it's constantly shifting it's kind of like the area x in uh um the uh whatever those books are or like the zone in stalker roadside or picnic like, well yeah but the zone isn't ever changing in stalker yeah it is, is in it? roadside I mean, picnic it is not well, not I'm to sorry, the extent I'm talking about will's like the talking about yeah um, now wait the car is sentient the car is not sentient, but they they call um, it a revenant, which mm. is it has like chosen you and like won't. It's like an object that won't will always appear with you, sort of thing. Okay, um, so I was going to make a joke. About it's not a night rider. If you can you can tear down other other cars and and use them, and that's carnivalism. Carnivalism, not car. What was it? Carmageddon was that? Stupid? Carmageddon. That was Car when they punch. were yeah. shutting down on that highway in LA briefly. Yeah. Um, so it's fun. I, I found the driving neat uh, and like getting out and collecting stuff. The game was extremely dark. Uh, like I cranked up the gamma and it didn't, when I cranked up the gamma, it didn't look overblown. So I was like, couldn't tell is this how it's supposed to be? Or was it actually dark mm -hmm. before? Um, the aesthetics really great. Uh, I kind of love what you're doing. I didn't have as much fun with like, the inventory management system seemed kind of fucked. Um, but I, I really was like just playing through the demo and then I quit it because I didn't 
want to have to replay it because the save data doesn't transfer over. Um, and then uh, the only thing I can think of is if anyone's played Far Cry 2, the cool thing about Far Cry 2 is it made you have a physical map in the game. So you couldn't pause mm-hmm. and look at a map. You held the map in front of you and you had to look down at it while you're driving. And that is essentially what this game is. You're just doing everything while driving. I don't know if there's short hotkeys to like turn the engine off and do the white uh there was for wipers but to like throw it into park but i was like having myself turn the engine off put it in the park to like save on gas um and all these different situations so it was kind of fun i I, I, love a diegetic map i do love a diegetic map Mm -hmm. i something okay can you help me answer this question yes i i i feel like i read or heard somewhere that this is like a roguelike run based game what is is there a loop in this game what's what what, what is it um i i feel like the run based game is probably just the the like map it generates i don't know if i don't think if you die you start over from the beginning but i it, it's like every time you go out you're going out on a run to go complete objectives and it's like making a oh, map. okay so it's a it's a what is it called like a zone based yeah like no. i assumed i assumed when i went into this game it was just a big open world map i could drive around and it's not yeah so gotcha so so it is kind of run based but it's it's not there's a term for it but yeah. it's more like escape from tarkov dark zone in exactly yeah uh in in i think i'm having a stroke like extraction but continue. but it's there's not other players yeah there, obviously. extraction yeah, that's what it is it's an it's, extraction game it's generating i think it's generating the level every time you're going out um yeah because at the end of the like tutorial mission you like add an upgrade to the garage base so i assume it's like a constant gotcha. bringing stuff back to that. so it's so so it's an extraction game you're doing runs to get stuff and bring it out and whatever you end up yeah. leaving with that yeah and it's kind of like a puzzle doing okay. that so it's, it's really a puzzle game wish what was that, Jake? I'm referencing Roadside Picnic again. Ignore me. Okay. Um, you do that, bud. I do. Look, there's something burning inside of me that I have to get out, which is that. That's the. I feel part. like. <laughs> I feel like the perfect setting for a run based roguelike game would be January 6th. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's like get in the Capitol and then you get in the Capitol and it's like, what are you going to do? You're going to go shit on Nancy Pelosi's desk. You're going to go try and like get in the, like the house of representatives, you know, in the end goal, how you beat the game is the run in which you actually stop the vote. Right? Like that's the, (laughs) that's the ultimate goal. But each run you're just like, I got, I got to get a little bit more, you know, every time you get shot by Capitol police, the QAnon shaman revives you. And that starts the loop over. Yeah. That one, one of your goals is meet the QAnon shaman because then he gives you a free revive every run it's, it's one of those yeah. knowledge based games like yeah, we're on to something. outer wilds yeah exactly yeah actually yeah this Should is a you good fucking Ashley game Babbitt folks or not <laughs> it's like like I, I i hate to keep going with this but it's like if you watched if you watched the footage like how you got into the capital like people were like trying to figure out like oh this fence is only 10 feet tall but it's hard to climb but this one's t- this one's taller but i can climb over this balcony like you're trying to find the weak points just to get I, into the building after the first run you know gonna, not yeah. to follow the cop because he's leading you away from the chambers yes so you, yes. you know to turn <laughs> turn there <laughs> legitimately a good fucking idea like you no could have it's a very not good game here. it's not a good it fucking is. idea no i want more i want more roguelikes based on real events okay nobody wants want. that um oh my god so Escape pacific drive uh the next game i played uh was balatro which is uh which is a game karen is now obsessed with and uh is playing way too much it comes out later this week or latest this month excuse me uh it is a game that you are uh playing your dealt cards and you are playing poker hands to beat the small big and boss blinds of like poker nice. rounds so you get a hand of i think eight cards nine cards and then you are choosing the cards out of that your best poker hand to play uh in between rounds you unlock joker cards and tarot cards and planet cards 
Joker cards affect the stuff in the game. So one Joker card you might get is every odd number adds 30 chips in your played hand. Or I, I got one that was a piece of paper that just says this card repeats the leftmost Joker card. Um, nice. So a bunch of things like that. Tarot cards will be like turn any three cards into hearts, turn any two, uh, upgrade any two pairs to the next level. And so uh, I can't remember if those are permanent, but you can permanently upgrade the cards in your 52 card deck. So you could get like, you could have like four upgrade two eights Only to two, 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 two nines, and then you'd be down two eights, but you'd have four nines. Um, I, that's and it, cool. it, it's, it's run based, uh, see how far you can get. You can currently beat the demo. Karen whipped the demos butthole. Uh, she was having a lot of fun with it. Oh. Um, it is, it is, uh, very inscription vibes like CRT, uh, playing on that uh, Balatro, it is called. I am excited to play it. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna buy it when it comes out because it is, it is genuinely super fun to play, especially if you like poker uh, and, and card based games. Um, highly recommend it. Cool. Um, yeah. Next, I you posted. Sh- excuse me. Yeah, yeah. Karen posted about it in the Discord, and I took a look, and this is right up my alley. I've been craving some poker games lately. And I like weird card games, especially after uh, Inscription, which is really built around a weird little card game. So I'm I'm excited for this. This looks really cool. I wish Daniel Mullins would make like those decks because it's like a fun game to play. I think I think somebody did, right? I'm sure somebody did, but I want it official yeah. licensed Daniel Mullins merch. Yeah, yeah, you hear that, Daniel Mullins? This is a cry for it. help. Um, get off your ass and get on it yeah why don't you make something good for once like pony island three um next up summer house this is a very quick one uh you load into a level and you are literally building a house from uh, a bunch of different random pieces i've seen a lot of video of this it looks charming yeah it looks like this one artist i follow on uh twitter whose name i do not know so i apologize but it's very charming it was i don't know if it was glitching for me but my main house was fine, but the house, like the little tower I built next to it, uh, like half the objects wouldn't properly line up with it. Uh, no matter how I tried, like it would always be off by like half a block. So I don't know if like something actually accidentally got glitched uh, in the demo, but it was just a chill, fun house building thing. I could see my like if it's the same way I think uh, like enjoyment out of uh like Dorf Romantic before it was a, a like object based game or Islanders um, stuff yeah. like that where you're just building building for the hell of it. Uh, it was fun. It was cute. Uh, and then finally, the best game I played out of all of these demos, I think I pay, played like 15 demos, is called Eclipsium. Uh, this is. Uh, it looks like Doom or Duke Nukem, where basically you can tell they took photos and animation photos, real life photos, and just dithered them and like toned them down. Uh, it is a wild puzzle game. I woke up in a house, I left the house, and the outside of the house wasn't the same as the inside of the house, and I ate a mushroom and I went blind for a little bit, and then I found a fire. And then I went through this cave and I came out and saw this giant tower with a beating heart in the center of it. Uh, and then inside the cave, this was my favorite part. I fell off into the void and it, the respawn, it lands you back into the house you started at. And then when you walk out, you walk out the door to like the level you were just on. And then the house disappears behind Ooh, nice. you when you walk out. That's cool. So there's a lot of tricks like that. Um, at one point you like take a boat and then the boat stops and you're like what why'd the boat stop and you look back at where the cockpit was and it's just a doorway to another level and you're like oh so you go in there you do a bunch of shit including the scariest water i've ever been in my entire life where when you get in the water it just starts like going like uh, like playing this music louder and louder like something's coming to get you uh, t- absolutely terrifying so you do all this stuff inside there and then you get this container you leave back onto the boat and then you realize you just went to go get more gas so you pour gas in the boat and it like continues on uh it looks really cool it feels really great the sound design's awesome i uh, highly recommend checking out the demo clipsium i don't think it has a release date uh but i i really enjoyed it I, i'm thinking about making a video about it uh because it's exactly cool. my shit um and that's it. Those are the games I've been playing. 
go check out Steam Next Fest, please. It is it is worth it uh, to see all those demos, wish those things, and let people know uh, that you want to play their games. Plenty of demos out there. Uh, Ian Gibson, do you want to talk about Enshrouded? Um, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll just say to. it's. I'll just. I'll. I'll I'll hit it from a different point and and rather quickly, which is that it feels like the survival genre is in like a very good point right now where it's starting to become saturated in a way. And there's a lot of interesting survival games out there. Uh, You know, Pal World brought something unique and interesting. We just had Valheim recently, et cetera. Um, Even the I think Sons of the Forest 2, if that's what it's called, is coming out soon, even though it hit early access last year to a lot of fanfare so the genre is really in its heyday but that being said enshrouded is not a good survival game um and and i'm more approaching it from the idea of like will and i have been playing this and we pretty quickly started pointing out things that it was doing wrong and just being and we're not even survival genre like huge fans we've just played a couple of them and enjoyed them and it's like why are you doing it like this when this is much better and other games are doing that? And there's plenty of things that Pal World's been doing that are better done than what's done in Enshrouded. So it's kind of weird where if Enshrouded had come out five years ago, it would have been fantastic mm-hmm. because the genre was not at a high point then. But now that we have so many of these games and we've it's iterated so quickly over the years... And we have so many examples of how to make a good survival game, not because there's like perfect survival games out there, but it's like this game does crafting really well. This game does exploration really well. This game does like storage. This game does building really well, etc. And Shrouded is just like it's like a middling survival experience across every single one of those. So there's nothing offensively bad about it, but there is nothing particularly great about it either, especially compared to these other games that have much higher highs and some much lower lows. So it's like, it's disappointing. I mean, I, I, I mean, well, maybe you could talk about it a bit. I'm sure you were just as excited to play this game as I was. I feel like we're both ready for a survival game, especially after, you know, pal world kind of scratched that itch for a bit. Yeah. It feels like, <clears throat> it feels like, uh, it's not, I mean, it's a good, it's an okay survival game. It just doesn't feel like it's, uh, it doesn't feel like they play tested it. Like they put all the things and pieces of a really good survival game, but none of it is paced yeah. out very well. So like I was saying to you on, uh, on that stream, yep. uh, like in Valheim, it really paces stuff out. So by the time you're ready to build a, a sufficient base, you have stone and foundations. By the time you're ready to build a big house, you have plenty of access to wood and stuff. By the time you're ready to decorate your house, that's the time you unlock dishes and and uh, trophies yeah. and stuff yeah but this game like started you off with that stuff so you just have menus and menus of like bed different types of beds different campfires different dishes and everything it's just like i'm not at that stage in this game i'm like out yeah. here breaking giant caskets to get metal scraps dude like i'm not wasting any of this on a on a yeah. dish set um so i yeah. think that's its biggest issue is just pacing and the other issue is you go out to rescue the blacksmith, the farmer, the alchemist, the hunter, and they give you new recipes, which is awesome. That's a great way of doing it, bringing these people back to your base. But then you have to go talk to those people every single time you want to build something. It doesn't add it to your workbench. You still have to go track the person yeah. down every single time you want to build anything from their stuff. And and you don't just have a central place to be like, do I know how to build a charcoal kiln? Or do I need to go find someone to build? Like, it's just, it's just bits and pieces of a good survival game that aren't put together correctly. Yeah, I, I, think, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head, which is it feels like they implemented each piece of this game tested it made sure it worked but they did not sit down or have enough people sit down and do a full level zero to level x end to end playthrough where they felt the progression and they felt how these systems interact with each other and they felt what it was like to be a player experiencing the first 5 10 15 hours of this game because if they had done that i'm pretty sure they they would have very quickly realized that the pieces were working but as a whole, there's there's things that are not meshing well in here. So it's it's a shame because there is some stuff they do really cool. 
But at the end of the day, it's it's not good enough in a genre like this right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, especially on the back of Power World. But like you said, yeah. I think even without Power World, I think I, I think I, I would have said the same things and been like, let's go play Valheim, you know? Yep, yeah. Um, I, I will say, as a final thing, I think the one big thing this is missing is the is something that makes it unique, special, etc. Like Pal World, it was Pokemon with guns, right? That got you in the door, that got you excited. And then you're like, oh, this is actually like a pretty good survival game. And then you're in the loop and you're enjoying it. Valheim, it was like, yo, look at this weird looking fucking game, right? Like it's like pixelated voxel Viking thing. And you're like, this is weird. And then you're like, oh shit, there's a good game in here too. And then you're playing it. This doesn't have any of that. It's a lot of different pieces, but the look is nothing unique. The gameplay is nothing unique. It doesn't have any unique systems in it. It's just all that put together. And that's that's going to kill the game in the end. Yeah, I um, think the shroud is the only thing they have going for them based on the name. And it's, yeah. even then, it's just an it's not a cool thing. It's an annoyance. Yeah, yeah. So I would say if you're interested in this game, you know, it is only, I think, 30 bucks. So maybe pick it up and try it out now or wait for it to go on sale. It's not terrible. It's just there's a lot of better options out there right now. But if you've already played those or you're really interested in what this is doing, then sure, give it a shot. It's not a bad game. It's just not not good enough in today's market, basically. Yeah. Um, other game I've been playing is Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. Um, talked about this last week, how I was still kind of going through the intro section. Um, which pretty much industry ride people are complaining about is being slow. But for me, I'm actually really enjoying because it's really letting it's it's really telling you what this game is about. And this game is story heavy, character heavy, cutscene heavy. And even when the game does start to open up and you're doing more things more frequently, it's still like any fucking side story is going to have at least a couple minutes of dialogue in it. Right. So like in a weird way, it's kind of preparing you for that. It's getting you back into the story and the characters and it's letting you know what you're going to do as opposed to other games which are more action forward or would try and hide that until later this is like no no we're going to kind of overdose you on cutscenes and story right now so you know what you're into so that being said i did clock at what point in the game they basically take hands off so and let you kind of run around the map um, and so what I mean by that is Yakuza is always based on, you know, hey, there's a big neighborhood that's open to you and you can run around, you can go into the stores, you can talk to people. There's usually a main story objective you're trying to get to, but you can see little side stories, you can see little games, you can interact with all this stuff on the map, etc. So it's kind of an open world for you to play in. And then when you're ready, there's a story beat for you to progress the main story. So that didn't happen until six and a half hours into the game literally six and a half hours in. So up to that, you're doing cutscenes, or they like open the world, but all the streets are closed off except for like the four blocks you need to go down to get to the next story beat. Mm -hmm. They're very slowly dishing out stuff. But like I said, I really enjoyed, you know, those, those first six and a half hours because I'm getting into the story, getting into the characters. They're, they're dishing out just enough action for you to not just literally not be playing the game, but you are starting to get into the mechanics, etc. Um, and you do have like a section where you go through a boss fight and everything. So it's still very enjoyable. Um, I will say. I was not expecting this, but. This may be my favorite JRPG combat system. And I, I didn't even realize it until I, I heard them talking about it on the giant bomb cast and Dan Reichert in particular was was talking about how good it is. And it's because it's turn based, but you basically have your you and your party let's say one or two other people um shout outs to save data thanks for the raid oh thanks save uh data. we're talking about yeah we're talking about like a dragon infinite wealth so basically the way combat works is you have you and your party it's all turn based but when you get into combat you have this big circle around you that you can move around and position yourself so mm -hmm. for example one of the things i always do is there's a group of enemies i try and position my attack so that I'm targeting one guy, I see an arrow behind him, which is where he will fly after I hit him. 
and I'll try and position it so I hit him. He goes flying. He hits the guy behind him and deals damage. So even though I'm only attacking one guy, I've positioned myself so I'm actually hitting and doing dealing damage to multiple people. You can start getting pretty, you can start getting pretty crazy with it. You can hit them into certain objects in the environment. So, for example, you can hit them into traffic and then a car comes along and does extra <laughs> damage to them. You can, um, if you're standing next to an item like a bicycle or a traffic cone, you'll see a little icon, which means when you make a basic attack, you'll pick that up and use it as a weapon to deal extra damage to them. You can hit, you can hit enemies into your other party members. So when they get to the other, you hit them, they go flying into your party member, your party member automatically hits them as well. And it raises your bond with that party member. So you'll do better in combat together. Like it's it is turn based combat, but there's so much like action to it. But it's not action like on a timer. It's not active time combat. There's a lot of positioning involved in it. I have a question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, this sounds a little bit like the video you made about Mario plus rabbits. Is there any similarity there or am I reading too much into it? Uh, I think too much into it because that is literally a grid. And you're choosing to do specific like movement based attacks in mm. a way, whereas this is literally like it's a street brawl. Right. And so you're positioning, you're like moving around and being like, I'm going to hit you, but I'm going to hit you from here into that. So sure. it's a little bit more fluid um, and it's not necessarily specific movement based attacks. You're just choosing where you're going to hit them from and where they're going to go after they've been hit. Yeah, I just want to say, Jake, you're not crazy because I had the exact same thought when he was describing that. And what I think it is, is Ian is the worst. No, what I think it is, is the like knocking a person into your like friend is like the thing in Mario and Rabbids. Yeah, like, that you're, is you're always building off of like multiple people as like something mm -hmm. you want to try to do. So I, I, I did think that when you said it, it, it immediately made yeah. me think of that. That's shared. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's it's great because it's not just I feel like a lot of JRPGs and turn based combat is especially non grid based is literally just like I have my action. My party is standing in a line. Your party is standing in a line. OK, my turn. Action. Your turn. Action. Whereas this is like there's like a tiny bit of timing because like you're the enemies are always like kind of milling around. So you're like, oh, I got to time it right. So I hit into him or you're trying to line up your attack so that you end up on the other side of the enemy so that when it gets to your other party member, the enemy's between you so you can knock him between them. So it's like it's really cool and it's so quick and fast paced and dynamic. That is just a lot of fun. Um, Will, are you going to be playing this? Is this the, the second year of the JRPG? Um, oh, God, your second year. Uh, no, I probably won't be playing it um i mean eventually i i thought about playing uh uh the first like a dragon uh but no i probably probably not i think i might finish up final fantasy 7 this year i think that might be this year's goal okay um i will tell you this is on the game of the year nominee list because it's it's fantastic so far um i'm about 10 hours in uh as i said i did get the uh mini map opened up so now I'm kind of running around and do, doing a lot of stuff in Hawaii. Um, I forgot. So this, the other game that I played a lot of Yakuza is Yakuza 0. And I feel like Yakuza 0, fantastic, had a lot of side stories, etc. But I feel like only a small portion of them resulted in mini games. Whereas I feel like, like a Dragon Infinite, well, I'll just talk to somebody random and they'll be like, you know, you hop on the trolley for the first time and he, and there's an old guy there with a the camera and he's like, hey, you here to get your pickle excited. And you're like, what? And he goes, I ride this thing all day and take pictures of perverts. And you're like, what are you talking about? And he goes, let me show you. And folks, it's just fucking Pokemon Snap. And so now every time I ride the trolley, I can play Pokemon Snap where I just take pictures of perverts dancing around the streets of Hawaii and I have Hell to like frame yeah. the shot perfectly and time it. And I'm like, this is just a, just a side like story. Things at them too, or like whistle, <laughs> like like your little flute to get them to come out from the, the shadows. Not yet. I, I maybe later I've only played the, the first one that's available, but it's like, it feels like Pervert half the time bait. I talk to somebody. Yeah. Half, half the time I talk to somebody, oh, it's, it's, 
it's more than just the usual of like, hey, can you go talk to this person? Can you beat this person up? Can you take me to this place? They're like, hey, let me show you this entire fucking mini game. You know, like one of them was like a logic puzzle where it was like, I want you to talk to this person. They're buried in the sand. And I'm like, OK. And you go over there and there's like 40 people buried in the sand and they give you a logic puzzle. They're like, he's next to this person, but not near this tree. He's in the third column, but second from the left. And you're like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> like you have to solve a logic puzzle. So it's just crazy. There's so much going on in this game. And I'm really enjoying playing it. Um, there is a problem, though, which is I'm not playing nearly as much of this game as I would like. And it's because I'm getting distracted by something else. I can't stop playing VTOL VR, folks. It's every fucking day I'm putting on that headset. I'm not going to talk about it too much. I just want to say something happened. Um, I happened to look at my hours count. I've played 75 hours of VTOL VR in like the three or four years that I've had it, which is insane to me because it's a VR game. It's not the type of game you just boot up like you got to be like, I have time. I have space. Let me put the controllers on. Let me put the headset on. Let me like spend two, three minutes like loading up all the systems to get into the game. And it's not the type of game where you you boot up and you play five minutes of it. You're like, no, I got to sit down and like actually fly for a bit. And I even with all those restraints, I have 75 hours in this game and I'm still learning stuff. There's still mechanics that I am like starting to understand and grasp better. And it's gotten to the point where when I'm on TikTok now and I and TikTok knows I like playing, so it'll show me like <laughs> like videos of like fighter jet pilots and stuff. I can like read 75 percent of the HUD. Because I'm like, oh, yeah, I know what that is. I know what that is. I know what that is because I was taught in in VTOL VR. And it's fucking wild to me. Game is incredible. Uh, I don't know. Do you guys have a game like that that you've been playing for three or four years and you just kind of get into these things where you're like 30 minutes every day? I know it's what is it? Islanders for you, Jake? <laughs> well, now I'll dance between Islanders and Mixolumia because they're both kind of equally kind of casual sit back and just play for yeah. a bit. Yeah, it's like, like yes. oh, I've got an hour. What should I do? I should read a book. I should play Yakuza. I should do this. And then before I know it, I'm fucking flying Mach 1 over, just <laughs> fucking cooking people. And it's it's so good. It's so good. What about you, Will? You got a game like that? No, I, I, I don't have that relationship with any video game. Maybe Picross, but other than that. It could be VTOL, buddy. It could be VTOL. Uh, not a, what I'm uh, hearing is every time, you know, every time you see on Twitter some, you know, somebody they're getting riled up about this coming civil war. And then somebody's like, yes, but the U.S. government has, you know, fighter jets. What I'm hearing is now we have an asset <laughs> on our side who can fly one of the jets. It's fucking wild, though, because there's a lot going on in the jet news right now because you got Ukraine going on. You got the Houthis going on. You've got endless F-35 debate. And I just am like understanding more and more of it simply because of how much better I am getting a VTOL VR where now I understand these systems, which in the video game are based off of real life systems. And I'm like, oh, so that's what they mean. OK, yeah, I see what you're going on. And to the extent and I swear, this is the last thing to the extent that one of the guys I follow on Twitter is like this photographer who just loves like taking pictures of military aircraft. And he posted this picture recently. He was like, check out this. <laughs> He's like, check out this crazy picture I got of an F-45 of, of an F-35. And he posted the picture and it was a F-35 taking off. And, and because of the lighting and whatever, you could see through the cockpit, you could see like a pixelated, but you could see the HUD. You could see all the screens in front of the pilot and you could see like the GPS and everything. And I was like, I know what that is. I know what that screen is. I know what that screen is. And I was like, I, f I fucking know that, like, not to the extent that I could fly it, but like, I understand more about real planes and fighter jets now because of this fucking game. It's incredible. Beautiful, beautiful game. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful game. Um, speaking of beautiful games, Jake. Uh, your eyes are red because you have been crying. Tears of the kingdom. Yeah, new, a pretty new game, Tears of the Kingdom, that I'm, uh, I played whatever it was up to the point where we could d d judge them for game of the year, but I've, I have kept with, I have not rolled credits, but I've, I've, uh, done all the temples, 
I have done up to the the point in the main quest line where you you go back up into the castle for the first time and you fight Phantom Ganon. Um, that's where yeah, I'm at gotcha. right now. Um, yeah, I I I am certainly enjoying it. Uh, I like the the all the different like you know the neat little physics systems that they've built mm-hmm. and the uh, the com- com- combining tools with weapons uh, element of it. But um, I don't I don't love it. I don't love the combat. Uh, and I don't like the depths. Oh. Yeah. Depths are really Let me be honest with you. The depths suck because they take away half the things that make Legend, uh, that make Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild so good, which is like the signposting and the like, let me see the full terrain and I have to figure out how to go through the terrain. Whereas the depths is just like, no, you're not going to see shit. You're just going to see a light in the distance and you're just going to kind of have to fucking bumble around and run into random cliffs and shit. And it's like, why are you taking that away from me? Like, that's half of what makes the game like, so love, fucking good is the yeah, terrain. I love the sky stuff. And I like, you know, building a little flying machine to go be like, oh, I want to see if I can get to yep. that island. Um, but yeah, I don't like I, I, I have the same kind of. Emotional response to it that I always had to the nether in Minecraft, where I'm like, Okay, well, I know there's valuable materials down here that I have to go get, but I hate being here. Yes, hundred uh, percent. But um, the best. I um, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you That's something. Funny. This is not really a spoiler. It's right where you are, Jake. Basically, which is, I didn't like the depths. I barely did the depths, and you're about to hit a story point where they're like, "Surprise! You need to go do a decent part of the depths to advance the story." And I was like, "Guess I'm not finishing this game then," and I fucking put it down. <laughs> Is it, I mean, I did when they were like, oh, well, here's the thing you have to go kind of look for now, the like the fifth sage or whatever. Yeah, did you um, get the fifth sage? No, but I, and maybe I'm on the wrong track because I went and I, I was like, well, I haven't explored the depths immediately under the castle. And so I started doing that and I got down to a point. Oh, that's said, wrong. Well, that's then the I'm, wrong way. On, I'm way no, on the no, wrong no, track. No, no. And I, I went look, and I got up, to, like, up to the fifth sage. Right. You'll go there yeah, eventually, the, Jake. The, I, I did the same thing, but yeah, the fifth stage is a is a bunch of depth stuff. Yeah, and and the fifth stage part is pretty good, and I think maybe because I had already kind of unlocked near the area, so I didn't have to explore. But even after you get the fifth stage, they're like, "Oh, well, to advance the story, you have to advance the depth storyline." Mm. And I had not done much of that, and I was like, "I don't want to explore the depths anymore because it's it's taken away half the shit that makes this game enjoyable." Um. So yeah, I I, I get which where you're where you're coming from for sure. I don't, but it doesn't yeah, make sense. Like mechanically, this game rules. Aside yeah. from the actual act of fighting something, everything else is great. But I don't like the combat. Yeah, combat is like something I tolerate. It's one of those things where I don't think the combat is good. But the weapons and the things you can do with the weapons and the weird stuff that happens with oh, like, yeah. oh I neat. bounced him off of here, I set the grouse on fire. So it's it's like it's like it's not that the combat is good, it's all the all the mm-hmm. systems that play into the combat to make it weird and varied, et cetera, yeah. that make it good. Yeah. That's what I've been playing. <laughs> wow. Cool. Well, I uh, won't tolerate the depth slander, but I guess uh, <laughs> everyone's entitled to their own opinions, no matter how wrong they are. Um, so we're going to move into the news section here, folks. Uh, a lot of news this week, which is why we saved a whole 11 minutes for it. So don't you worry, Sibylla. We'll go through it in due fashion. Uh, Ian, uh, the newsmaster, as he calls himself uh, to in the mirror, uh, tell me all the news you got, baby boy. It is I, the nudes master. Uh, First up, the hot button topic for this week. Uh, Lots of rumors, sparse details, but where there's smoke, there may be fire. Microsoft may be bringing some of their previously Xbox exclusive games to other consoles, including the PS5 Nintendo Switch. Uh, We've heard Hi-Fi Rush. We've heard uh, uh, Sea of Thieves. We've heard starfield 
We've also heard about possibly Indiana Jones, which hasn't even been released yet. And this has kind of torn the gaming sphere asunder between those who feel True. like Xbox is in a terrible place and this is the latest of blunders and those Xbox fanboys that feel betrayed and those who look at this and think this is a smart business decision. And we're all waiting uh, with bated breath for what Phil Spencer has said will be a business update event sometime next week to give more details, presumably on this. Uh, what What are your thoughts? Will, what do you think about this? Um, I mean, I mean, Microsoft has said over the years of they've wanted to bring stuff to other platforms like there were, there was that whole initiative with Minecraft like you like you literally log into yeah. your Xbox account and unlock achievements on I think on the PlayStation as well as the Switch uh yeah. and stuff like that and also uh they wanted to put Game Pass like there was that rumor a while ago about Game Pass on on Nintendo Switch and stuff like that so I mean at the end of the day they're trying to make a lot of money and I think this whole thing also just exposes uh the people who get upset when their box doesn't their <laughs> 600 dollar box doesn't have the stuff they want on it and it's going to both 600 dollar boxes but i do understand frustration coming from people being like hey i bought an xbox because i thought i kn knew it would get indiana jones uh blah 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 blah, blah. like i understand the frustration yeah. there it would be the same if they started releasing uncharted or god of war or last of us on xbox like playstation people would be like well why the frick did i get a playstation um well i mean they did it's on pc well yeah those playstation exclusives are on another platform on a microsoft platform yeah so i think at the end of the day uh it's people just being crabby but um listen you gotta make your money somehow and microsoft i mean they're they're not making money right now they had to lay off all those people because they're not making money so they should try to make some money i think this is a good idea yeah i look i'm just gonna say it console war is dead right a lot of this hinges on xbox versus playstation um not just from a fanboy perspective of like i'm an xbox boy i'll never play playstation why are you putting that over there and vice versa but also from just like a business sense, you know, Jeff Gersman went off on this in his podcast lately, and he basically started screaming about how Xbox is not competing with Sony, with PlayStation like Xbox is competing is competing with Netflix. They're competing with TikTok. They're competing with going outside. They're competing with spending time with your kids like they are not locked into a single ecosystem. They are fighting for your money the same as your time and money, the same as any other fucking entertainment property. And it's not it's not just about boxes anymore. It's about how can we get you into our ecosystem to pay a monthly fee to put ads in front of your face, X, Y, Z, et cetera. And if that means going beyond just a box, especially when the box is not selling that well, then, yeah, fuck the box. It's not about the box anymore. Um, and, and I'll say something controversial here, but I'll, actually, it's not controversial. It's a little pointed. It's a little heated, but I'll fucking say it like. Console war only matters if you're poor or stupid, right? Because if if you are financially independent, even even barely financially independent, you can afford to buy both consoles once every seven years. That's a thousand dollars for a seven year life cycle. And you get an Xbox and a PlayStation. Like if you if you actually care about this hobby and you care about good games, there are enough good games on both platforms, exclusives and not. And there's enough of a difference between the platforms that it makes sense to own both of them. And that's just a thousand dollars that you have to spend in a seven year period to have both a PlayStation and an Xbox. It's not about competition between Xbox and PlayStation anymore. You should not be picking sides. You should be saving your money and buying both sides. You fucking idiot. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, I, there's the. Um, I mean, the, the idea of console exclusives, I think, is going to be a relic of the past fairly soon because i yeah. feel like they only really began as a means of selling the hardware like they're like okay this is exclusive to nintendo because nintendo wants you to buy the gamecube or the ds or whatever like if you want to play this game you have to buy our machine if you want to buy what if you want to you know play mario but now you know so much of it is just 
digital anyway that yeah. why is there not just every every you know sony has their digital store and nintendo has their digital store and you can buy it and play it wherever um yeah i think people getting bent out of shape thinking that it's some sort of betrayal you need to get yeah you need to go outside and <laughs> yeah. find more important things to be upset about because there's so much more important stuff to be mad about than a business yeah. that you already enjoy letting somebody else enjoy the thing that they made yeah very weird yeah and i think the other thing is um i'm not going to name names simply because i can't remember them Phil but Spencer. there were people there were people in games media at like reputable outlets well-known games media people who were like just another sign that xbox is floundering they don't know what to do this is a poor gaming decision and it's like what the fuck are you talking about like well, allowing more people to pay <laughs> you more money <laughs> exactly yeah yeah especially especially when you hit them for having poor series sx sales which is they're not great but they're not terrible but let me just throw out a number here i don't think this is the real number but if you only have 10 million people buying your hardware that means even if you have a bang a fucking seller of a game you're only going to sell 10 million copies of it you're ceiling to buy your hardware but if you spread out the hardware availability of your game you are increasing the potential buyer base that just makes sense and it's and and like i said playstation's already doing it xbox has already been doing it they've been doing first party pc and console games for years now it just makes sense this is not that big a deal and, and it it just makes sense period period it's not that big a deal honestly it just makes sense it just makes sense folks you heard it, it here works. first moving on um <laughs> something that kind of makes sense but doesn't to me honestly um disney is investing 1.5 billion dollars in epic games to create a quote persistent universe tied to Fortnite. This is according to The Verge, who says, quote, the multi-year collaboration follows a similar deal with Lego. Uh, thoughts on this, folks? Is this the new metaverse? I think, I think Disney is far more in a in a state of like they don't really know what they're doing than Microsoft is. Um yeah. The, yeah. the 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 eggheads the higher ups at Disney are definitely stuck in the past in terms of you know what they're doing with their brand um with Bob Iger I think it was today being like yeah these kids are playing a lot of video games we should we should get on that like, buddy that's been happening for a long time and you're the one who who bought Lucasfilm and then nuked LucasArts because you didn't want it and now you need it um I yeah. mean, I don't know. Fortnite's going to eventually be the only video game that anybody is allowed to play legally. So I guess it <laughs> uh -huh. makes sense. Can I say something? Can I say something here? You're gonna we say all know this is true. We all know this is true. This deal makes sense, but they picked the wrong company. It should have been with Roblox. Like, if they did it with Roblox, day fucking one, it would have ten times the impact with their intended uh, audience which is kids, teens, and fucked up adults, than it would over the entirety of whatever they end up doing with Epic and Fortnite. Because the whole purpose here is they're basically going to allow Epic to create Fortnite-like experiences with Disney, with Pixar, with Star Wars, with Marvel, et cetera, uh, properties and experiences. And sure, you'll have a decent audience like they did with Lego, but at the end of the day, it's not going to be as big an audience. It's not going to have as much engagement with your core the people you want going to Disney parks and screaming at their mom to buy them Disney stuff as it would with Roblox. They should have done this with Roblox. It would have just made more sense. Uh, I think I, I honestly, I think I might agree with you. Uh, I will say there were already ties, so I don't think they would have done it, but I think, I think that yeah. does make yeah, sense. Been putting Marvel characters and Star Wars characters into Fortnite for years. Yeah. Now. But it's just one of those things where we've seen Lego Fortnite, we've seen Rocket Racing, we've seen Fortnite Festival. Those are their three big, unique experiences with like 
I don't want to say a triple A push behind them, but like core epic push behind them and some IP existing IP behind them. And they all were OK at best. Rocket Racing sucks. Fortnite Festival, people don't like it. It sucks. Lego Fortnite, we played it. We were like, I guess this is OK. And a lot of people were like, this is OK, but I'm done after five hours. There's not much more to do in here. Like, I, I just don't trust Epic and Fortnite to really capitalize on this and provide them with uh, $1.5 billion or more return on investment for Disney. They should have done Roblox because think about Roblox. Quality doesn't matter. You can make the shittiest thing possible in Roblox and you'll have hundreds of thousands of little kids playing it. We've proven that time and time again. That's all you have to do, buddy. If there's anyone who knows how to get the kids in on it, it's Ian. I know him. I got 200. I got 200 friends on Roblox and they're all children. All right. <laughs> you don't know that. Legally, you don't know that. <laughs> Your honor. <laughs> yeah, adults don't play Roblox. Adults don't go around friending people on Mr. Roblox. Mr. Crosby, do you remember what did he, did he and Gibson <laughs> say? Uh, on the, on the night of February said, 8, 2024. I, I'm giving birth. I'm giving birth. <laughs> this is a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> there's part of me i'm gonna say this out loud because there's no way it's gonna happen but jeff gersman <laughs> keeps talking about roblox but he keeps saying that he needs somebody to show him what roblox is and i really want to reach out and be like hey buddy you don't know me but i have a roblox series and i need to show you this we need to go on this journey together yeah i'll i'll call i'll call call him for you <laughs> um, oh boy god that sounds like a nightmare uh 1.5 billion. Hey, invest in Subpixel Disney. That's where you'll get your real money's worth. 1.5 billion is that is 37% of Star Wars cuz Star Wars was 4 billion. 4 is that billion right? dollars. 4 yeah. billion. Yeah. Wow. Crazy. Too crazy. What's up next, buddy? Um next up uh IGN workers at IGN have decided to unionize they're united in solidarity um i believe they're joining with the news guild and the cwa guild uh in quote an effort to keep ign the amazing place that it is both for our audience and fellow workers i think this is great another wave of unionization especially in games media which feels like is even more troubled than games development right now which is What's saying CWA? a whole lot contract workers or i i don't know what that stands for do you think I do fucking research here, Jake? What the fuck? <laughs> I'll tell you, you this. They got a shitty Twitter because they authority. don't. It's just CWA this. It's Communications Workers of America. Okay. Yeah. Took a couple clicks, but we got so there. So I think this is only the editorial staff. Is it part? Is it video as well? Is that not part of the editorial staff? I mean, I sometimes me, video is separate the... from editorial. Oh, uh, sorry. I... I'm trying to remember. IGN creative teams. On the Z I'm just genuinely Z curious. I, 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 that's what I, because I saw it was just a journalism guild, so I wasn't sure if it was everybody. Yeah, I'm not sure. It, uh, I haven't found most. I found was creative teams. IGN creative. Yeah, teams. so that that might that might include it. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's wild. Good, Good for them, though. Then. That's B. Uh, I signed um, this petition. Two quick hits here. Um, first one, Subnautica 2 was announced today. It's planned for release this year. Holy shit, 2024 is this year. Um, and it's going to change things up slightly. It's going to be a four-player games-as-a-service model game using Unreal Engine 5. Uh, yes, question from the back? No, I did see the um, Unknown Worlds clarified what was meant by games as a service in just that mm -hmm. they were going to be having continual updates for it, but it won't have any like pay to win elements or microtransactions or any of the typical gotcha. games as a service stuff. That was just gotcha. an umbrella yeah. for them to be like, we're going to be adding new content to it. Yeah. And honestly, I'm, I'm totally fine with that. This was one of those things where I, I know that games as a service does not necessarily mean microtransactions. It just means they are actively updating it, even though, Typically, that includes Michael transactions. I hate that guy. Um, <laughs> and honestly, I think this makes sense. We were just talking about survival games, and I feel like it's always 
I'm going to play the survival game. I'll put 25 hours into this run. Then I wait a year for a big update and then maybe I'll play it again. And then I wait a year. Whereas having it continuously update and adding new content, new areas, new things, new tech. New I feel like that that makes sense for a survival game, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. So I'm, I'm excited for this and co-op. I, I didn't realize the first game didn't have co-op, I guess. Whereas this one yeah, does a single player. Yeah, we should do a Subnautica, too. When this thing comes out, we should do a multiplayer stream. Yeah, Subnautica was cool. That was really cool. It's, um, you know, that game's way too scary. I couldn't. I only I, I did like 10 hours, I think. I did turn off the hunger. I turned off the food. I just had the uh, the oxygen thing because uh, the food thing was pissing me off. I but can't, anyways, I can't do I can't do underwater stuff. I don't like it. Too scary. Well, um, so I'm, to I'm glad picture. I've got you guys on. I know you guys are big from software fans. Big news, big rumor from Games Radar. The new Elden Ring game is coming. And guess what? It's better than ever. It's a free to play mobile port with Genshin Impact style transactions uh from Tencent yeah. how excited are you guys for this I can't really even so like I read the headlines about this and my brain like didn't understand all those words in that order I'm like I don't I can't even comprehend wh what it, what this would even be like cuz so much of the game is about going out and finding interesting items are you going to be able to like just pay five dollars and get one of the items that you would get from one of the demigods like right at the start i don't no. understand how those systems it, are going to get put yeah. in. yeah so zero details on this but in my head i'm picturing it as every time you die it's like a chest timer and you can pay to immediately respawn or, watch or you ad. have to like or watch an ad or you have to wait like 10 minutes to respawn there's a lot of good opportunity here honestly to make a terrible game but a uniquely <laughs> terrible game true well yeah you could spend two hundred dollars trying to kill margit um, or it'll take <laughs> you seven days waiting yeah. for the respawn timer to elapse yeah oh, yeah God. this is a terrible idea i think the good news is that progress has been slow which makes me think it's probably gonna gonna die yeah i can't i can't imagine this thing makes it to market like of all the games yeah to put into that model i just it i, I can't i can't i'm gonna say it though it. i'm gonna fucking say it this totally makes sense for the chinese market though they love their mobile games yeah they love free-to-play microtransaction games they love games that are enough of a triple a game that you get that feeling but in a traditional mobile free-to-play game format so this feels like Call of Duty Online, which for years was not even available in the US. It was just an Asia market game. So that's what this feels like. This feels like Tencent saying, let's get that magic. Let's bring it to China, change it to a format that'll do even better sales and money wise over here. And the was white Americans never even have to know about it. Released in China? I don't know, but they're not they're not big into traditional console games over there. They're just not the communism yeah they don't they don't play uh mmos over there because you can't have a a tank man class <laughs> not even good is that is that you know a, what? a loose tiananmen square reference yeah can uh, you work on that oh what now next week so i had like next five week. seconds to come up with that okay <laughs> i'm there's something there but i need you to work on it next week <laughs> we'll it. kick come off the episode with it yeah okay I'll bring my groceries home and think about it. <laughs> I'm like, okay, that's better. That's a better one. Um, I was going to say, I, this is an aside, but I feel like every time I see people talking about Genshin Impact uh, or when it comes up, I want to die because it's always people being like, oh, look at this character. Look how cute they are. Like, and they're like, I, you know i just this might be a bigger problem with people in fandoms but they'll always be like oh i don't think this character would do that because they're in love with this character and like all these elaborate like talk like like talking through of story beats and characters when it's just like you're selecting characters in this bad mobile game and i'm just always left perplexed and confused when i see these posts and I was just like, what is going on here? Like, oh, they're revealing this new character who who is definitely the sister of this character. 
and I think they want like and I'm like what is going on here these people aren't real what is going on? is this one of those like like 10 signs of a psychopath is that they have zero empathy for characters in a story I don't know I next time I see because it's I always browse uh all on reddit so that it it always comes up and I like see Genshin Impact and it's always something like with the lore or with something or like oh this is what this character looks like when they're embarrassed and I'm like, why? Like, what is going on? Like, what have I stumbled into? It's called a. It's called. Will you used to work there? It's called a fandom. I know, like, and it's a nightmare. Sake. I hate it. It's not great, especially with properties you don't enjoy. But it it makes sense. I'm not as confused by it. I I wouldn't engage with it willingly, except if it's Stargate fandom, in which case, toot toot, all aboard. You know. I just I when you know Stargate Universe season three. I, I've yeah. never enjoyed speculating on things that aren't true. <laughs> <laughs> this is where, if you knew enough about a Genshin, in fact, you could then be like, which is why, and then oh, you go into why. your fan yeah. theory. <laughs> uh, over here, you'll see that what I think. Over here. Is, I don't know. I, I People confuse me. Uh, anyways, um, did you want to say something, Jake? I have no thoughts about Genshin Impact. And no Impact. Gotcha. You know, I played it. It's not a terrible game, uh, but it's not for me. I'm not horny enough for it. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, folks, that's going to do it for the news tonight. Will, would you like to take us on home? Yeah, I'll take you on home. Uh, I don't know if, Jake, do you still need wish list spotlights? How are those going? I keep forgetting to edit them. I think it's a valuable <laughs> segment, so we should talk about it, but I haven't oh, yeah, edited yeah. them into any videos. I will just say this week's uh, wish list spotlight is that Eclipsium demo, that game. Go check it out. I talked about it earlier. Uh, it is, it's super cool looking. It's fun. It feels great. Um, and it's weird. So go check it out. I like weird shit. So have fun with that uh folks that's gonna be the show i will be back this weekend with the one and only hell divers will be playing i believe tomorrow sunday hey, when are we playing it no, no, sorry saturday sorry tomorrow's friday listen i don't have a job anymore so every day is a saturday <laughs> um we're playing it saturday i think or sunday one of these days this week yeah, one of those days one of one those, those days. days and then uh next week we're starting new shows uh i've put together a delicious thumbnail for my show today so uh get excited for that maybe i'll post that as a little spoily in the discord uh and we'll be back with those next week also local chat next thursday uh jake thank you so much for being here people can find you on twitter at underscore jake terrio uh and right. people can find you at think gibson people can find me at hunt 270 at subpixel team is where all of our cool stuff is subpixelfilms.com and we'll see y'all next week <laughs>